The Taste Master is proudly brought to you by Stella Artois. Make occasions more special. Start with a Stella. This week on The Taste Master, eight South African foodies will do whatever it takes to land their dream job of resident taste master on Afternoon Express. There's executive chef and mom, Boitumelo Chumi Mochai, recipe developer and content creator, Charmaine Ramalope Makubela, self taught cook, barman, and media man, Empty as Heart, wardrobe and makeup artist, plus farm style cook, Masejo Marite. Food truck owner, family man, and marketing exec, Alex Turao. Manager and proud cook of All Dishes Indian, Nikara Ramdial. Private chef and DJ, Chaba Sweet Genius Mukake. And pop-up restaurant chef, McDonald Maipa Satihe. With your presenter, myself, Harmony Kazalondi, and judges, author and food maestro, Zola Nene, and Gregory Zorneki, Eat Out Chef of the Year. Over the next six weeks, we discover which one of eight contestants has what it takes to influence the culinary choices of South Africa. Someone who knows the right ingredients to make an occasion more special. That one individual who will ultimately become the resident foodie on Afternoon Express. This is The Taste Master. Walking into the studios, I'm like, wow, wow, wow. This is definitely where I can see myself working. I see a future here. I'm at home. I'm at home. Welcome, contestants, and congratulations on making it this far. Each one of you have been hand-selected as finalists to compete for the title of the resident taste master on Afternoon Express. This experience can change your life forever. I entered the competition because I want to showcase my skills and be the best chef that I can be. I feel blessed. I feel this is the moment. I feel like everything else that I've been doing before, it's been a series of moments that actually has built up to this moment. It just feels like a step closer to achieving a dream, you know, so it's exhilarating, I'm excited and happy. Throughout your journey, as you compete in various foodie challenges, you'll be judged on whether you have what it takes to become the taste master by our main judges. <laughs> Zola Nene started off as a foodie intern before she landed the role of resident chef on The Espresso Show. Chef Gregory Zarnecki is the executive chef at Waterkloof and won Chef of the Year at Eat Out. Chef Greg seems like the most stern one and the one I feel like I really have to watch out for. He's the type of guy I feel like I have to say yes chef to, you know. So no, she seems like a very warm and bubbly person, very inviting. I have a bit of a crush on Chef Gregory, so <laughs> um, I'm excited to be working with him, as well as Zola. I've always looked at her and thought to myself, I can't wait for the day I get to work with her, and seeing her here, it's just crazy. It's actually a dream come true for me. Judges, what is a taste master and what are you looking for? For me, a taste master is somebody with a genuine love for food. So I want to see how you express that genuine passion through the plate and through your personality. And for me, I'm looking for someone who is creative, and consistent because I believe that's the key to success and I also want to see charisma and playfulness on the plate. Right, on to your very first challenge. This is the Instagrammable challenge. Now we all know we eat with our eyes first so this is all about visual appeal. We want to see how your personality comes through on a plate and this week we won't even be tasting your food. Yep, we are only judging on pure visual appeal so we will judge the final picture. But don't worry, because every week a different guest judge will be joining us and will mentor you through the competition. Remember, we're eating with our eyes, so bright and colorful. Good luck and think out of the box, huh? <laughs> Instagrammable dish is all about how it looks because people can't taste through a screen, they can only see. That is it. So I think it was a great brief. It's a challenge that every other chef doesn't really know how to deal with. So it's completely different from just cooking. 
So I'm seeing a few people that I've been sussing out, Alex being one. He owns a food truck and I know he's good at what he does. And I'm hearing some other chefs uh, who have worked in fine dining restaurants. So those are people that I'm going to be keeping a close eye on. My competition is myself. If you think too much about everybody that is around you, then it's going to be a problem because you're going to focus on this person and only to find out that the underdog becomes the winner. I walk into the kitchen and right there on my station is this box. And normally boxes mean mystery ingredient. So there I am getting flustered and thinking to myself, what the heck are we going to prepare? I see the box and the first thing that comes to mind is we have our first challenge. I'm shaking in my boots. Welcome to this week's kitchen. Now, as you know, being a taste master is not just about the food or how you present it. It's also about how you present yourselves. So we decided to get you a little something to have you looking more like a taste master. Please go and box your gifts. <laughs> Looking inside the box, and there's a lot of cool things, but what catches my eye is that apron from Yuppie Chef with the Taste Master on it. So, hey, they knew who's coming. <laughs> the first thing that I see is a diary, and in that diary, I can write all my recipes down so then I don't forget anything, so I know what exactly I'm doing. The ultimate gift of all a new set of Fustov knives. How did you guys know that I needed a new set of knives? I'm really excited about receiving these knives. I absolutely love knives. I have a bit of a knife collection. Whenever we go out shopping, I'm like, mom, let's get this knife. And she's like, no, we have enough. I just love knives. <laughs> this box, everything I'm taking out of it is like a step closer to out of my kitchen and into your home and basically like pure elevation. With all the toys, I definitely feel like a taste master. I feel like I can do my job. I can translate to my audience exactly how I feel and how can I inspire them, absolutely. I look like a taste master. I am the taste master. Coming up, guest judge and digital media guru Ompile Sidulwane gives an Instagram masterclass. There we go, looking good guys. You're looking more like taste masters now. And I think you're ready to meet your guest judge. She's a foodie, content creator, and digital media manager at Woolworths. And she's responsible for all those delicious pictures you see on the Woolworths social media. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Umbile Sitiluano. I'm so excited because she is an Instagram fundi. I can't wait to get the throw off. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good, you? Good. Fabulous as always. Awesome. Umpi is going to take you through your first masterclass. She's a digital media guru, so pay attention, take notes, and make sure you learn something. You're in great hands, and I'll lead you to it. This is a chance to actually get it from the source, to know what to do, what not to do, what angle to use, so I can only get better from this masterclass. Guys, first of all, congratulations on being selected. I'm so excited for you guys. I'm so happy to be here to be sharing some tips with you guys. Uh, just a bit of background of what I, what I do. I'm in the Woolworths social media and digital team and I look after the foods division. So we're always looking for the next hot foodie on Instagram or whoever has a great blog and great social media presence. So what I'm gonna be doing today is sharing five tips on how to create the most Instagrammable image or video on your pages. One of the few things I've struggled with is taking really good pictures. So finally now I get to get some tips on how to make it look amazing. So first tip that I have is the background. So if you're creating a summer dish, for example, you'd want to do something light and airy. And if it's something with fruit in it, you'd want to maybe just add a slice of the fresh seasonal fruit. Make it look a little bit like someone can almost feel that it's summertime and all that delicious summer food is coming. I've had a few ideas for my dish so far, but now as I'm listening to Mpile's masterclass, I feel like I need to just make sure that I incorporate vibrant colors 
as well as a bit more seasonal ingredients. Second tip is the light. So if you are at a restaurant or you're in your kitchen and you're done with your dish, try and take it as close to your window as possible because that natural light takes out all the colors, the natural colors of your dish. The next thing is obviously your dish. So you always have to make sure that your dish looks delicious. When someone sees it for the first time, you don't want them to swipe past it. You want your user to be able to almost taste what you've made. The other thing that is very important when you're taking pictures is the angle at which you take your pictures. A lot of people like to do a top-down image. Sometimes it doesn't quite work. I find that in the digital space, people want to see the image from the side. So obviously something like a pizza, you're not gonna shoot from the side because you need to shoot it from the top. So you'll use your discretion. I do take pictures. I'm not the best photographer, I will be honest with you. Um, but I'll find the best angle for the food for that day, for that time. So as Mpila is speaking to us, I realized that there's so much that you can do with a simple picture. And I realized that I've actually been playing it very safe. Another nice tip is to make sure that your food isn't always so clean. So if it looks like this, it looks like you've just made it in your kitchen, you know, it's a bit messy, you need to make it look so delicious that someone wants to touch it and slice it and eat it almost immediately. Any questions, guys? Yep. Oh, cool, Alex. For us, do we need to create things that are available in store with our photos? Because yes. we want to make it obviously achievable for the audience. Exactly, yeah. so there's nothing worse then looking at something, it looks delicious. Now you want to make it, but it's got some ingredient that you got on your trip to India and you can't find it, you know? So try and make it as accessible as possible. Yeah. Okay guys, so you now have all the tools you need to create the most Instagrammable dish. All the best. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. The main thing I've taken away from this masterclass is that I need to focus on this pick. It's not about how this dish tastes today, it's all about how it looks. Pretty plate. The masterclass has definitely changed what I'm thinking about the dish because now I need to pull out all the stops. Now I have an idea of what they're looking for, so it also makes me confident in terms of doing what I do best. First things first, I take out my pen and paper, I start jotting down exactly what I have in mind. It's going to be vibrant, it's going to be colourful, and there's going to be a play on textures. I'm thinking about maybe making a dessert with multiple components. I'm also thinking of maybe incorporating a bit of spice in my dessert. I'm not sure how yet. I just want to see what I can do. What stands out for me is to be authentic. I'm going to focus on creating things that I create every single day for my kids, for my wife, things that we love at home, things that every South African loves at home. Because that shows a bit of me, that shows a bit of who I am, my personality, my emotional connection with food, and my past history with food. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. What I like about food is that it's an art. You can play around with it and you can smell it, you can taste it, you can hear it, all your senses are activated. I'm inspired by visuals, of course, but I also look at trends, what is trending right now, because if it's going to be Instagrammable, it needs to be trendy as well. I'm planning on making sure that there's a texture, there's also lots of color, and lots of character in the actual photo that is gonna be taken. I'm thinking of maybe adding some coconut and strawberries in my dish as they're both seasonal at the moment. I absolutely love the two flavors together, so I think it would be a good idea. I'm planning my dish and the first thing I'm thinking about is color, texture. How do I make my dish interesting? So growing up, when I look at my birthday pictures, one thing sticks out that I don't like the cakes and you can literally see it in my face. So that gave me an agenda to make sure that I get to have my cake and eat it. So that's why I'm making a pavlova. For those that don't know what mhodu is, mhodu is tripe. So I'm planning on making that in a way that's never been done before, in a pizza. Imagine mhodu pizza. Need to get back to the studio, but one more stop. Woke up, here we come. I've grown up in an Indian household. Indian cuisine is something that we make on the daily. So it's something that 
I'm good at cooking, I enjoy cooking it, I enjoy the flavors. I've always seen my gran, who I call Aji, and my mom always cooking with spice and you just kind of smell the aroma and I think it just makes the dish so much better. It elevates the flavors. With those famous Boa Cup spices in the bag, it was back to studio. I've got time and, and it truly helps. Um, now that I've got my ingredients together, this just really helps me align everything and it brings everything together so that I can make this dish. I'm going with fresh, vibrant, colourful vegetables that are earthy, hearty and speak home to me. I'm checking my ingredients, everything is in order and I'm ready to get the show on the road. No dish that's made that everyone knows has been done in a small amount of time. You need time to make good things happen. Um, growing up on a farm, making wine, making olive oil, things take time. Same goes with cooking. You need time to make good food. That is it. So generally, I'm a very confident cook in the kitchen. I'm always by myself, so I feel like, you know, I'm really in control. Um, but I'm excited to see how this experience is going to be. It's really out of my comfort zone, and I feel like it's pushing me to grow as a cook. I am feeling a bit inspired by the ingredients that I've found. In fact, some of them are maybe making me think I should add a bit more of this and a bit more of that. Um, I'm actually wondering if I should just change the whole dish, maybe. I think, um... I'm full of mixed emotions. I don't know what to feel right now, but most excited. I really want to get into the kitchen. The best thing about any kitchen is turning on that gas. I'm excited, um, nervous, and I'm definitely very confident about tomorrow. So I can't wait, I can't wait. Looking at all my ingredients, I definitely know that I'm ready. I have my dish in mind. Basically just need to go rest up and the contestants better watch out because tomorrow I'm taking names. Mmm, smells good in here. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. <laughs> I can see and smell that the creative juices are literally flowing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is he getting ready for tomorrow? Yeah. Makes things easier. <laughs> Day one. How are you guys feeling? A bit exhausting, but to be honest, it's been really fun. Uh, going around, getting our ingredients. Like, there's some things I thought I wouldn't get, but I managed to. Secret ingredients, I won't tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> We've also had ample time to actually get ready and do everything. So this basically gives us a chance to showcase our skills. Well, I'm just really excited to get cooking tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll pick that up tomorrow. For now, the sun is setting, so let's call it a day. All right. So All right. Right. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, they've sourced color, texture, and glorious ingredients. But when things get cooking, who will keep their cool? Make occasions more special. Start with a Stella. It's day two here at the Tastemaster SA. Our contestants, they got up bright and early to get started on their task. The challenge, they have three hours to create an Instagrammable dish, upload it, and hopefully the judges love it and takes them to the next round. Let's catch up with them. It's happening. The day is finally here. Good morning, contestants. How are you feeling? <laughs> I hope you have some great progress on your perfectly Instagrammable dishes. I just want to remind you on some of your criteria. You are going to be judged on your ability to tell a story, your plating and presentation, to see if your dish is on trend, and ability to influence. And don't forget to add just a little something, something about yourself, all right? Yeah. Cool. All the best and good luck. Thank you. I'm like, this is more serious than I thought. How many walks in any mind is about the criteria and I'm just making sure that I've got all my ticks and t -t -t -t. yeah. Until how many came into the room, I was relaxed, but now I'm stressing. <laughs> I'm a bit anxious, but I perform well under pressure, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I have to make sure that every step gets meticulously done so that whatever is in my head comes through onto this plate. There's always a lot of pressure in the kitchen when it comes to challenges because you never know what might happen. You might have it all planned out and 
things happen. We do have quite a bit of time, but at the same time, there is a lot of pressure and I feel like there isn't a lot of room to slip up. Um, so I do kind of want to get everything going how I want it the first time. Having Harmony in the kitchen reminding us about this challenge and what it's about makes me think, did I really cover all my bases? Is there texture? Is there color? Is it Instagrammable? I enjoy putting my hands into things, getting gooey and getting dirty in the kitchen, but in a good way because it's all about making good food. So if you're methodical and clean, fantastic, no problem. That's just not me. I, I can be honest straight away. Um, um, I'll have a clean kitchen, but I'll be a messy cook. But the end product's gonna be messy. I think actually, Alex is a strong competitor. He really is, he has a lot of experience. So I think that he's gonna make a good challenger. I'm looking around and I'm starting to notice the competition is tough here. But I look behind me and I see that Alex has not one, but like four plates of flapjacks. I'm like, okay, gotta step up my game. Alex. <laughs> I'm good, how are you? Good, good. Man, this stuff smells good. What's going on here? So basically I've come up with actually five different uh, pancakes. The reason being is I'm a daddy. I've got daughters, <laughs> they love our Saturday mornings and each one has a taste, so that's what I recreated here. A classic pancake done in a modern way with things that are trending. So we've got charcoal, we've got beetroot, we've got Ooh. matcha tea, we've got ombre, so that we know the girls at home do their hair, you know, <laughs> fading in to obviously darker. Oh, nice. That's what we got, and then obviously we were using a lot of superfoods, yeah. uh, which are currently in. That's what we want, so we've got pistachio, we've got blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. Man, this is very creative. In real life, it looks amazing, but do you think it's gonna look good in the picture? I believe so. Uh, the colors are popping. We've got pink from the beetroot, black from the charcoal, green, off green from the, the matcha. But once I've dressed everything up and I've chosen the environment I want it in, it's definitely gonna pop out. All right, all the best, man. <laughs> See, Java, I'm loving the colors here. What's the idea? Uh, the idea right here is citrus foreplay. So basically what I'm busy with here is mandarin and gooseberry jam with some apricot tea. It sounds amazing, but how does this represent you? I'm bold, I'm authentic, and I'm bubbly. Well, I hope it pans out really well. <laughs> so many things could go wrong. I could overproof my dough, I could burn my mohodu, or I could literally just end up with a slop on the plate. Shumi, there is an interesting aroma coming from your side of the kitchen. Well, I've got the mohoru that is the meat part of the, the actual pizza, so with the beautiful glaze from the barbecue sauce. And then I've got also my cherry, cherry tomatoes, which are multicolored. So we've got the red, the yellow, and the green as well. My base is not tomato base, because then it would just be bland. So I've got a ricotta base. So it's going to be browns, reds, yellow, green from the rocket. Uh, but you'll see, it's going to turn out really great. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I do remember the first time I made raspberry coulis. Today I'm making strawberry, but the first time I did, it was a raspberry coulis, lemon curd, and my mom absolutely loved it. And I was just kind of playing around with uh, ingredients and flavors. So hopefully it will turn out just as great today. <laughs> hey, Cara. Hey, what's hungry. going on here? <laughs> oh, lots of things. Yeah. <laughs> really, really busy. <laughs> it looks like you're making a dessert. Why did you choose to go that route? Yes. Um, you know, I like sweet things, um, I'm quite a lover of desserts, but why I chose this dessert in particular is that it has quite a few components, so that reflects me as a person, because I know that I'm a multifaceted person, I'm not one-dimensional, there's so many different parts to me. So my dessert is basically coconut cake, a lemon curd, and um, a strawberry coulis. And how's yours gonna stand out though from what everyone else is making? Um, well, I know that my dish is gonna be nice and colorful. There are gonna be different textures. So hopefully that will pop out in the picture. Well, I hope it works out for you then. Thank you. <laughs> Although my dish doesn't necessarily need that much time, there's a lot of pressure to nail it. I'm off to a great start. I got my prawns marinated and I'm just busy grilling my corn at the moment. I want a nice char on there so that I can give a nice smoky flavor to my puree. I think pressure is getting to people today because everyone is chopping off their fingers. 
I don't even know how I cut my finger. Um, I think it's just first day pressure, um, but nervous about everything. So sometimes you end up doing a bit, a few silly things. <laughs> Disaster strikes in the kitchen, and guess who gets cut? A chef's fingers and thumbs are everything, so it was straight to the clinic. I can see that the pressure is not only affecting me, um, it's also affecting MTRs. I just hope that he can get back in time to finish his dish. I feel that he's made it this far because he's got the capabilities to recover, so he will be fine. I, I am feeling a lot of pressure right now because there's a lot of stiff competition. I'm working right across from Alex and he is looking like he's ready for battle. He's got all his things in order and that is like very intimidating, but I just have to try my best. Charmaine definitely looks strong for me because she knows exactly how to prep for a dish that needs to be assembled later on in the day. First things first is preparing the meringues for my pavlova and they need to be perfect. And because it is my very first attempt, I'm shaking. Charmaine, your pavlova, how does this describe Charmaine? Uh, well, it just says I like pretty things, obviously, and uh, I'm all about the aesthetics. So pavlova for me is what represents, you know, best represents my personality. Yeah, I'm just waiting for my third layer of pavlova, which is the final one, because I wanted a bit of height just to make it more Instagrammable and good to go. All <laughs> right, all the best then. I look around, and right next to me, Charmaine's pavlova, Alex's pancakes. Gosh, these people's dishes look so amazing. I have never actually made this dish ever in my life. I've probably made different components of the dish, but I've never put the dish together. It was a one-time idea, and I went for it. Big Mac, how are you hey, doing? How are you doing? Good. Good you know, a lot of people are doing desserts and sweet stuff, but you're the only one that I see who's doing a starter. Why yes. is that? Well, the reason why I decided to do a seafood starter, I was actually inspired by my grandmother while I was young. Okay. And she used to uh, fry fish, uh, egg. Yeah. And that was one of the best dishes that I learned from her. So as time went by, I used to watch Jamie Oliver on TV <laughs> cooking, and he used to make the most delicious seafood uh, recipes. So I picked up on that, and as time went by, I decided to incorporate seafood into my dishes. I made a, a tempura fried prawn. The special thing that I did about it is I put, I put some, some bubbly in it to make it more crispy, basically. And then what I did was I made a mango salsa. In my mango salsa, I made it very fruity for the season, you know, how it is. And some people like to have fruits and veggies yeah. and something light and healthy. So I want to create a very quick and healthy dish that people can relate to yeah. and, and not maybe actually have a hard time in making it as well. Oh wow, yeah. quick and trendy. Quick and trendy, quick and <laughs> easy, anyone can make it. <laughs> Good, make it, that's yeah. why they call you Big Mac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling good actually, uh, I'm almost done. Uh, my pizza's in the oven, all the toppings are on. I'm just getting ready for the plating now uh, so the picture can be taken. Went to the hospital, doctor wanted to do stitches, but I felt like it wasn't necessary. The most important thing for me was to get back to that kitchen and start finishing my dish. Wow, I'm relieved that MTS is back, but that means that there's more pressure on him because he's lost out on precious time. What I'm a bit worried about is the duck. I have never cooked duck before. However, I mean, I have to take this chance. This is a taste master and I feel like I've got to step it up a bit. Masejo. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> I'm good, I should be asking you how's it going. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going good, it's going good. Yeah. Um, I'm happy with how my meal turned out. Um, so um, I have embarked on a new um, healthy journey. So basically, if I can take taste and health and put them together as one, I feel like that's something that I can maintain. So yeah, otherwise, with lots of love, <laughs> this is all I'm giving. I'm just giving you lots of love on a plate. All right, can't wait to see how it turns out. Coming up, it's lights, camera, action, and every element a Tastemaster needs to create a feast for the eyes.
Our contestants are putting the final touches on their perfect Instagrammable dish. But now it's time for them to direct the photographer in order to get that perfect picture. Okay, so I want from an angle about here so we can get in all the elements. And um, I don't want the focus just to be on the cake. I want it to be on the dish as a whole. So everything can be glorified. For my picture, I'm going for something a bit moody, sophisticated, um, something that's really going to complement my dish. My dish is simple, but there's a lot of elements. So I want the background of the picture to be simple as well. The reason why I choose the space is because the wine glasses kind of complement my dish. It creates a nice crisp and clean background. It's easy to communicate with the photographer as I feel like we are on the same page. Um, he is understanding exactly what I am trying to achieve. I'm loving my final picture. It's exactly how I want it to be. It incorporates every single element as well as my idea. I found the perfect spot for me to take my picture, which is the entrance, which allows for lots of daylight, which is perfect. So we're gonna try this shot, and then the second one I'll be pouring, and hopefully we can capture that. The type of picture I'm thinking of is obviously from this angle, so people can see the layers. Seems like everyone is doing aerial pictures, so I wanna be different. You can ignore the gray part, so we're focusing just on the white section? Just the white section, and you can cut this part of the... Of Cutting the half the plate, so you've done half the plate, so... Yeah. I'm explaining to the photographer that I want textures and colours to be seen in the picture. It is quite easy to work with the photographer because he kind of understands food styling and what I'm trying to achieve, so I'm happy. The pictures look amazing. The natural light is definitely the one. So I'd like you to perhaps just highlight the actual colors on the, on the pizza itself. So I've got some chilies there for the red and I put it on the darker board so that with the parchment paper it actually shows how the brightness of the actual pizza. The, the colors of the pizza, yeah. yeah. I've noticed that everyone else keeps running down and looking for other overly complicated places to take their photos. I've decided on simple yet again because I actually want my pizza to stand out and I've chosen a simple background that actually makes the pizza become the focal point of my dish. Whenever people have pizza, I know there's always a beer. So where's my height gonna come from? From my Stella. My pictures look great. Um, there's some parts where I thought they were a bit uh, too bright, but luckily Denzel actually helped me with that. He kept giving me some tips on ways to make it look better, angles, mood. I didn't think you could put moods into pictures. I'm very confident in my photo. It's very Instagrammable. If I don't make it to number one, I'm at least top three. My approach to plating the citrus for play is allowing those bold flavors to play on the dish. It's coming together beautifully. My brief for Denzel would be the focal point should be the dessert. Never mind the background. Yes, the background is important, but the focal point should be the dessert. Because if the dessert was not important, then we couldn't have spent so much time curating the whole dessert. If you shoot it from the top, don't hit it straight like the top, like everybody else, but just like that. Okay. I think like that might just give us a better outcome. Yeah, I quite like this. I have all these elements and I knew that I had to put it together in a way that looks appealing to the user that's going to see it. Did I nail it? I think so. So what I'm looking for is like a black background so that my colors have this great vibrant pop for you. Okay, so I just want you to go higher so that you can get the corn in, especially the popcorn. It's a play on corn, so let's play with the corn. We have to see the corn. Perfect. One thing I know for sure is that I eat with my eyes first. So looking at my picture, you'll see the spices, you'll see the flavors. It will literally look you in your face and you'd want to lick 
that screen. I found the perfect place. It's got beautiful natural lighting. It's got a beautiful bamboo background. It really is complementing my elements. So I just feel like this is coming together so perfectly. It's tricky to really try and get what's in my head out with terms and words that the photographer can properly understand. However, I feel like if I speak visuals, he'll really understand me. I'm pretty confident with my picture. It is amazing what photography can do to your food. And I just feel like at this point, the judges can literally taste my food through the picture. The mood behind what I'm creating is brunch. People have brunch and breakfast in usually places that are lit, places that are open, places that are floral. And also where we find ourselves the season and, and following the trends, people want to be outdoors. So I'm looking at an environment where those things are enhanced. I've made five dishes, but I'm going to choose one. I'm going to narrow it down to one that represents all five because I believe it represents the color, the texture, the appeal, and my character all in one. When it comes to photography, I'm not a photographer. I like looking at photos. I know there's a lot of work that goes through it. I'm a cook, I'm a chef, you know. We need to make taste, but when it looks to imagery, it's a whole different ball game. So working with a photographer um, is, is great because it, it will give me inspiration to augment my dish. My approach to placing the dish, I really want to show people how you can incorporate the sea and the sand as well as the surf. I'm downstairs in the restaurant and I want to take a picture somewhere where there's a lot of leaves and flowers so we can mimic that image of beach life and the scenario of outdoors. It's very tricky for the photographer to understand exactly what I want, but I know he'll get it right. What causes the blur is nerve-wracking but it also makes me very confident because the picture came out so beautiful. Contestants, I see a lot of vibrant colors, beautiful presentations and great plating, but is it good enough to impress the judges? Definitely, yeah, yeah. let's hope so. All right, all the best guys. It's a bit nerve wracking that the judges won't be tasting my food, for me, taste is a very integral part of my cooking and I know it's one of my strengths. I'm so relieved that the judges are not tasting the food because my pavlova was stuck to the baking paper. So, thank the foodie gods. I actually don't feel nervous. I feel super confident and I hope the judges are nice though. Coming up, who's your favorite contestant? Let us know on hashtag the Tastemaster essay. Make occasions more special. Start with a Stella. Judges, you have a very difficult choice to make. The contestants did an incredible job in creating the perfectly Instagrammable dish. And today, you have to decide who wins the challenge and who goes home. Let's take a look. Ooh, oh, wow. nice. Yeah. They turned out so nice, hey? I know, they did a really good job, mm. actually. It's a really mm. high standard, which is great to see. What I love about all of them is that they're all very much on trend in terms of colour, in I terms of vibrancy. Yes. So I think that they all managed to tick that box. I think a little bit of finessing in terms of styling and cleaning things up a bit and choosing a yeah. theme and sticking to it. I especially love how they listen to the tip about the backgrounds. I see they really worked hard on incorporating, you know, like a few elements here and there to make their dish work well with the background. One or two didn't quite get it, but overall, I'm impressed. Well, you know, I'm sure they taste really good, but unfortunately, this is a visual, Instagrammable mm. challenge. So we're basing it basically just on visual appeal and the bottom Same. two on the left. So the first one on the left, the second one on the bottom left. I think those two immediately caught my attention. Okay, I definitely loved that pink flapjack. And 
and I think that's a pavlova, I love it. The flapjack looks very professional, very clean cut, black background, you know, it's just focused just on it. You know, I think it's a great shot. You seem to all be in agreement with which ones you love, but do you have a favorite? Oh no, I definitely have a favorite, and I think you guys will agree. The pavlova is just stunning. It looks appetizing, I just want to dig in, and like, if that went through my Instagram feed, I would like a hundred times. If I have I could. to disagree, I'm sorry. I don't know, it's just, uh, for me, I'm leaning towards the pink flapjacks. That is an Instagram moment. Hmm. If you're scrolling through your feed, you're definitely going to stop on that one. Pavlova looks like someone shouted at a restaurant. It's yes, restaurant quality. <laughs> <laughs> but is it Instagrammable? I, I, I agree with both choices. Oh. You know, I guess I'll be the deciding factor. I'm, I'm it's a tricky one. You know, it is. Instagram. They're both gorgeous. Ooh, they are, they are cool. both really beautiful. Judges, so we have a decision. Yeah, I yeah. think we do. Shall we call the contestants in? Please. All right. Walking into the studio, it's elimination. My heart is pounding, somebody's going home, and it might be me. There's nothing that we can do, really. I mean, someone has to go home. I'm pretty confident with my dish and uh, with my photo. I'm feeling confident with my efforts because I tried my best. I feel a lot of pressure. I don't know what to expect. Contestants, welcome to the Taste Master table. Guys, I was super impressed when I saw these. You guys literally listened to all the tips that I gave you. The backgrounds are stunning. The colors are beautiful. I literally want to eat every single dish here. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. I will be announcing the bottom two. So let's look at the screen. I'm like, what? I'm in the bottom two. Ooh, I'm so relieved. I can't believe I made it. So for those two specific dishes, it was not as striking as the other ones, you know? The dishes are difficult to identify. It's not set up in a proper way that it looks like Instagrammable. So unfortunately, they are the bottom two. I knew that my dish wasn't at the top, but I didn't think I'd be at the bottom. So whose bottom dishes are there? All right, and yours is full. Which one? One on the left. The one on the left. I really want to commend you for showing a lot of skill. I mean, you've got a biscuit there and you've got a brandy snap. So we can see that you have great potential in the kitchen. And for you, I mean, that cake looks really moist. The crumb looks really lovely. The only thing is, I think if you'd chosen a different angle, perhaps, and if you'd maybe filled the plate a little bit more and thought about your plating, you know, in a circular motion rather than a straight line, it may have translated a bit better. You both are probably really wonderful cooks. Your dishes look like they might taste really great. It's just overall, next to all the other ones, they did come out the weakest. And my heart just sinks because I know the hard work that went into them. So I have the wonderful task of revealing our top two choices and they are these two beautiful pictures. So will the owners of these gorgeous pictures please reveal yourself. Whose pavlova is that? That's mine. <laughs> well done. Well done. Who do those flapjacks belong to? Oh. Well done, guys. So the pavlova struck us completely off the bat. It's so bright, it's so colorful, it's so inviting. If you saw this through your Instagram feed, you would definitely stop, you would definitely like. So that one was a great choice. Then the one on the right, the pancakes as well. Really beautiful picture. Love how it looks really appetizing. The syrup dripping, the brightness of the berries, the touch of the flowers as well. The back is a little bit muted because the food is really colorful. So also a really gorgeous picture. We now know who's in the top two, congratulations, and who may win this challenge, but we also know who's in the bottom two and who may be going home. The waiters will now bring each of you the winning dish. Once revealed, we will know who has won the challenge, and if your plate is empty, it means that you are going home. I'm hoping that I've got a dish on my plate. 
As the dishes are placed in front of us, I'm absolutely hoping it's mine. I don't want it to be anyone else's. Waiters, please reveal the dish. Congratulations to you. I'm sure you are a wonderful cook. Your passion, please don't stop doing what you're doing, what you love. Unfortunately, this was all about Instagrammable food and I hope one day we will get to try your food. And keep practicing. The more you practice, the better you're gonna get. Remember the angles that I gave you, you're gonna get good. Thank you. I think if the judges had tasted the dishes, it would have worked out way different. Sichaba, so is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, I would like to say thank you for this opportunity and I wish the best of luck to the team. Oh, thank, thank, you. thank you. It was great having you here, but unfortunately, your Taste Master journey ends today. Please go hang up your apron. Thank you. It's a sad moment for one chef, but incredible for the rest of you, because you get to go into the next round. Congratulations to you on your Pavlova win. Well done. Thank you very much. Ta-da! It's me. <laughs> I'm so happy. It's the best thing ever. And Charmaine, because you won this week's challenge, we have made you a personalized chalice oh, wow. that you get to take home. Thank you. That's Yay. awesome. Sorry, Alex, next time. Contestants, let's celebrate this special occasion because the challenge continues for you to become the Taste Master. I'm extremely excited. I can't wait for the next challenge. I want to show those judges that I'm in it to win it. Everybody realizes how high the bar is being set. Contestants, this is our first Taste Master meal together. Woo! <laughs> Let's enjoy and celebrate the special occasion because tomorrow the hard work continues. The challenge involves sustainability and farming for the future. But for now, cheers, guys! Right now, Shemaine and Alex, I'm gunning for you guys. I need to prove who the real taste master is. Fancy a trip for two to Belgium with Stella Artois? Show us how you are watching The Taste Master by uploading a picture or video using the hashtag starts with a Stella and you could be gifted a trip for two to Belgium. Follow Stella Artois Africa on social media for more. Entries close midnight the 17th of December. T's and C's apply. Another feel-good production.